Is there anything more fun or carefree than heading to your local carnival for an evening of games, fast rides and laughter? Being a setting that offers endless opportunities for creepiness, it isn't surprising that there have been countless horror movies set around parks, carnivals and circuses. So grab your cotton candy and keep an eye on that shifty clown behind you. I'm Jess from World Culture, and we're looking into the 10 best horror movies set in amusement parks. Number 10. Jaws 3D the film picks up 10 years after the events of the second film, with both Brody brothers now grown and Mike working as an aquatic technician at the soon-to-be-open SeaWorld. However, the water park's opening is thrown into deadly disarray when a giant white shark gains entry and puts hundreds of lives at risk. There is a lot that Jaws 3D could have done better. This film's instantly dated by the 3D effects, which often come off as unconvincing and sometimes absolutely laughable. But is it fair that this should be the only thing this threequel is remembered for? The film does try a very different approach approach and execution, and should receive at least some merit for that. Here, instead of the vast expanse of the ocean, we have a shark confined by the limits of the SeaWorld Park. In some ways, this amplifies the threat all the more, as there are underwater walkways, control rooms and other aquatic life at stake, as well as hundreds of patrons. Victims are all around and the film should be a tense ride. It's just a shame that the execution was somewhat subpar. Number 9. Carnival of Souls Carnival of Souls follows Mary, a young woman who has miraculously escaped a car crash alive and is attempting to restart her life. Her efforts are hampered by recurrent sightings of an eerie pale man, frequent periods wherein she feels she does not exist, and the feeling of being drawn to an abandoned carnival. A wonderfully unsettling and surreal ambiance permeates the entire picture as these seemingly inexplicable events torment Mary. Her discomfort and growing insanity is palpable, and scenes in which she appears unable to be seen by or communicate with those around her are genuinely harrowing. However you interpret this piece of surrealist art, there is something in Carnival of Souls that connects deeply with the human psyche and refuses to let go. Is this a film about a woman driven to the edge by grief, or is she trapped in purgatory and trying to escape the looming specter of death? This sense of uncertainty, masterful paranoid cinematography, and an eerie organ score definitely transcend the low-budget expectations. Number 8. Haunt Harper is persuaded by her friends to forget her troubles and partake in an extreme haunted house attraction on Halloween night. Once inside, the group are hunted down by a group of colourful antagonists and discover all too late that this is no game. Haunt cleverly chose to latch onto a trend that was blowing up at the time in the form of extreme haunted maze experiences. The movie exploits everyone's lingering fear that what we see in the darkened corridors may not just be special effects makeup. The smaller scale of this production, as opposed to Hellfest, means that much more time is spent crafting likeable characters, as opposed to lavish amusement park set pieces. Here, we actually care when a character falls victim to a gruesome Saw-style trap or meets one of our many-faced antagonists. The villains are the crowning piece of this fun ride and help it remain frightening and tense. Be it witch, ghost, devil or clown, every villain elicits a gasp when seen lurking in the background and their threat is ever-present. Number 7. Willy's Wonderland Willy's Wonderland sees a mute Nicolas Cage taking on an army of fluffy animatronic foes with a little help from some local kids. This movie is just pure unbridled fun. It knows it has a ridiculous premise, but owns it by not taking itself too seriously at all. Cage channels his inner Clint Eastwood in his brooding, silent, but absolutely badass portrayal of a character known only as the janitor. Similarly, the teen characters surrounding him are on the nose stereotypes that just get all the more hilarious when being murdered by giant fluffy robots. Speaking Speaking of our antagonists, Willy and his goons are unquestionably the highlight of the movie. They're brutal and sadistic, but always provide a perfectly timed merry quip. Since it came out of the gate, Willy's Wonderland could easily become a very marketable franchise, with talk of a sequel already afoot. Number 6. Tourist Trap Tourist Trap follows a group of friends that become stranded in the California desert by a seemingly abandoned museum attraction. There they meet the eccentric owner, Mr. Slauson, who promises to help. However, as the night goes on, the group begin to disappear into an ominous house on the property. Tourist Trap is the perfect example of a snapshot of the horror genre when it was in a transitional phase. The slasher movie was beginning to boom, while supernatural fare was waning, so Tourist Trap covers both bases with a little bit of everything. The slasher tropes are here as the group are picked off one by one, but there's also the bizarre addition of the killer having unexplained telekinetic powers. The idea of a madman turning people into mannequins should be creepy enough, but Tourist Trap steps up the oddity factor, making quite the unique film. The film is permeated with a creepy atmosphere, living mannequins, a truly bizarre woodwind score, and a masked killer you definitely would not want to see looming out of the darkness at you. Number 5. Berserk 
Berserk follows ringmaster Monica Rivers and her circus of employees as they travel England performing. Soon, someone begins picking off the fleet of performers in various nasty ways that at first seem to be all part of the show. Berserk has an undeniable sense of grandeur. It's beautifully photographed with impressive, vibrant spectacles showing actual circus performers risking their lives, as Joan Crawford narrates. Quite impressive for a film with next to no budget, really. Berserk also has the honor of being one of the first post-psycho movies to adopt that slasher or whodunit formula, as performers are hunted down and killed in various gruesome but restrained ways. A highlight of the carnage is undoubtedly blonde bombshell Diana Dawes getting cut in half as the audience cheers. Seeming much classier by today's standards, Berserk may not succeed entirely in making a circus seem sinister. It's a fine way to kill 90 minutes. Number 4. Child's Play 3 the movie picks up eight years after the events of the previous film, and sees a teenage Andy Barclay being made a ward of the state and sent to Kent Military Academy. Unfortunately, his old friend, Chucky, follows him there and sets his sights on another young recruit. The film felt cold and industrial, confined to one location with bland characters, as opposed to the previous film's colourful universe. However, there's a point where Child's Play 3 really shines and shows some masterful filmmaking. The climax sees the murderous doll wreak havoc at a carnival ultimately ending up in the haunted tunnel ride. Here, the battle between protagonist Andy and the pint-sized terror plays out amongst strobing lights, screaming patrons, and booming sound design. It's filled with tension and atmosphere, and gives way to one of the series' most terrifying visuals after a grim reaper prop slices half of Chucky's face off. This wonderful carnival sequence shows all the potential this threequel sadly wastes. Number 3. Freaks the movie tells of Cleopatra, a trapeze performer that joins a carnival sideshow. Scheming with strongman Hercules, she plots to seduce and marry Chief Dwarf Hans, only to kill him and inherit his fortune. If truth be told, the backstory to Freaks' very troubled and controversial production is much more interesting than the film's content. Browning's original cut reached 90 minutes, and when test screened, was apparently so vile that it caused mass walkouts. Hurriedly, the film was shorn by a third, and gruesome sequences involving the torture of Cleopatra and the castration of her lover were cut. However, that still wasn't enough to save the film from backlash, as many felt its us and them portrayal of the disabled versus normal people was highly offensive. The film is still worth a look if one wishes to glimpse a horror film made before the infamous Hayes Code of Censorship was imposed. The controversy generated by Freaks was the catalyst in bringing the code into force, and for that reason, the movie has been preserved as culturally significant. Number 2. Final Destination 3 much like the explosion of Flight 180 in the original film, Final Destination 3 again goes for the jugular with its centerpiece premonition. This time it's a double whammy, as roller coasters not only take people to ridiculous heights, but we're never sure if they're entirely safe. Every viewer has heard stories of the catastrophic injuries the thankfully rare victims of roller coaster accidents have suffered. Needless to say, Final Destination 3 delights in showing all of this in a blow by blow, impossibly long sequence. From the very first mechanical fault in the system to the final blood-curdling scream, the filmmakers ensure that after seeing this cataclysmic disaster, we'll never broach an amusement park again. With Final Destination 3, the famed visions of death most definitely reached their zenith, and unfortunately, subsequent films have failed to match that intensity or primal fear. Number 1. The Fun House the Fun House tells the story of teenager Liz and her group of school friends as they dare to stay after hours at a town carnival. Unfortunately, they witness a murder and become the homicidal individual's next targets. What makes The Fun House work so well is that it dares to be so wonderfully weird at times. And of course, that means it'll stick with audiences. A perfectly assembled ensemble cast is present and give performances ranging from the eerie to the overblown as assorted carnival workers. Where the film really shines is in its final act and the seemingly non non-stop chase sequences through the brightly lit, smoky funhouse. The movie time and time again succeeds in making a petite villain that could be seen as laughable a frightening and even intimidating force. The film artfully works the legends of the traveling carnival and the missing children and the boy who cried wolf into its story. We all know these tales, but seeing them play out as part of a slasher film makes them harder to dismiss as merely tall tales. Let me know down in that comment section if you can think of any other excellent horror movies set in amusement parks. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You can find me on my Twitter where I'm at JessMcDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more good scares.